So last week I took a drive just over an hour away from home down to Boss Castle, a beautiful village and fishing port on the north coast of Cornwall. With such a picturesque harbour and breathtaking cliff top views, Boss Castle is a photographer's dream. Unfortunately though, my timing sucked and the flowers were well past their sell by date. But thankfully though, I had my drone with me and I did manage to get some photographs that I'm really happy with. Now there was a time when all I used Lightroom for was importing and organizing my photographs, but that has now changed big time. Okay, so here's a load of the photographs that I took in Boss Castle, and to take the photographs with my drone, unless I'm doing a pano, I set the camera into auto exposure bracketing, so that it takes five photographs in quick succession, and each with a different exposure. Thankfully, there wasn't even the slightest breeze, so lining them up and blending them together in Lightroom was gonna be really easy. Okay, so here in Lightroom then, I've created a collection, and you can see that it's got the number five there. That's because inside are five images from one of those bursts using that auto exposure bracketing setting. Now, if I just open these up and scroll through, you can see that each of them has a different exposure value. So the first thing I need to do then is to blend these images together, line them up, and then create that high dynamic range image so that we retain all the detail in the shadows and the highlights. Very, very easy to do. I click on the very first thumbnail so it's highlighted hold down the shift key and click on the very last thumbnail so that all five of these images now highlighted and then we go to the photo menu, choose photo merge and HDR. Now very quickly Lightroom throws back a preview of what that image will look like once it's all done, it's actually lined it up, it's merged them and it's applied some settings and we can see over on the right hand side this is where we can control it. We've got auto align at the top here, I always have that turned on and I also leave this auto settings turned on as well. The great thing is with this is once we then merge the image, we can actually dive in and change these settings later on. The deghost amount I'll leave at none and I'm not going to create a stack. All I'll simply do is click on merge and very quickly Lightroom throws back that final lined up and merged image and you'll see it appear on the right hand side. It's actually the one here that's not highlighted. So let's click on it press D to go to the develop module and see it. And over on the right hand side now we can see all those default settings that were applied that we can come in and change as much or as little as we'd like. Now the first thing I'm going to fix is that which really jumps out at me and needs fixing and that's the perspective on this watch house just here. If I just click to zoom in you can see that the walls aren't vertical and that's because the drone has a wide angle lens, it was quite close and low down. So the perspective here needs to be fixed. To do that, we'll go to the transform section and we can click on auto, but you'll see here that that doesn't really fix it. So we need to do this manually. So I'll click on the manual settings, come over onto the image and I'll choose this left hand wall here, click at the very top and then drag down to the very bottom to say that this should be vertical. So we'll just give it a bit of an idea there. In fact, that one there needs to be moved over just a little bit to say there. Now you'll notice that nothing happens and that's because I need to put down at least two guides for Lightroom to fix this. So I'll put another guide over on the right hand side of the building here, again which should be vertical. We'll go over right at the top and I'll bring it right down to the bottom and then let go and you'll see that Lightroom does something. Let's just get rid of the manual controls and zoom out and you can see now the perspective has been fixed on the watch house and we've also maintained a great straight horizon. All right, now that that's been done, let's go back up to the basic section where we could come here and start playing around with settings, giving the image the look we want. But I'll be honest, one of my favorite parts now in Lightroom is over on the left-hand side, the preset. This is a huge deal in Lightroom, making a massive difference. Lots of different folders containing lots of different looks. There's two here of my favorites, Cinematic and Cinematic 2. I'm gonna go to the Cinematic 2 folder and you'll see that as I put my cursor over each of these presets, we get a full-sized real-time preview of what that preset's gonna give. Now I'm gonna go for CN15 because that really does add a nice warmth to the image. It deepens the blues, but also gives it a bit of a glow. I can even come to this amount slider now with presets to decrease the amount of that effect or even increase it. 
and I think I'm going to go for around about 130, really liking that, say around about there. Over on the right hand side, I'm actually going to dive into the blacks now because this preset, although I love it, has darkened down this area just a little bit too much. So we'll just bring up a value on the blacks to around about, say, minus four, something like that. Now, I'm also going to change the profile now. Now, if you don't know the difference between profiles and presets, in the description part of this video, I've put a link to a video that I made just a few weeks back that explains everything. But at the moment, it's set to Adobe Color. So let's have a click through to see what each of these will do. Landscape for me looks a little bit too much. It almost looks like that old school HDR when it was definitely overcooked. Uh, portrait, we've got standard, looks too flat and vivid. Now, vivid is the one that I really like. That is starting to look more like it was when I was actually there at the time. Now, I do want to give this image a 16 by 9 crop, but that's the very last thing I'm going to do because, first of all, I want to send the image into Photoshop to get rid of these people. If I do the 16 by 9 crop and then send it into Photoshop, that's it. It's baked in and I can't change it. So to remove the people, we'll go to the Photo menu, choose Edit In and Adobe Photoshop. That opens the image in Photoshop. We'll zoom in. I'll get my lasso tool from the toolbar and then just make a very loose selection around these people just here, holding down the shift key to add to the selection each time. And these people over on the right. Once we have that in place, we'll go to the edit menu, choose content to wear fill, and straight away Photoshop does a great job in removing them. For the output settings, I'm just going to use current layer and we'll just click OK. We'll go to the select menu and deselect that selection, file, save, and then we'll close this down and then head back over into Lightroom. Next thing we'll do is a little bit of sharpening, so we'll go to the detail tab. For this one here, I'm going to take it to around about 30 and we'll hold down the option key on Mac, alt key on Windows, and then use this masking slider, bring it over to the right hand side so that we can see the sharpening is not on the sky, it's mainly everywhere else but we're taking it off the sky, somewhere around about that is fine. And we'll do that 16 by 9 crop now. So we'll press R on the keyboard, go to the drop down menu here, choose 16 by 9 and I'll drag up from the bottom right hand corner. I want to make sure that I include these birds here in the top right as well. And we'll drag it around so that we get that top third there going across the horizon line. And this bottom third down here can be where we have that watch house. So something like that will be fine. Now, one thing I did when I edited this image for the first time was to add just a little bit of boost to that sunlight coming in from the right hand side to make it more like it was when I remember actually being there. So to do that, I'm going to zoom out to 50% and then we'll come over and get the masking section and choose a radial gradient. I'll then click down and drag right up on the right hand side here. I can drag to reposition it and also rotate it and make sure that the feather is way up. And all I'm going to do is simply increase the temperature to add just a little bit of warmth coming in from that right hand side. And again, obviously, I can drag that in to have more of it or less of it, something like that. Let's close that masking down. Let's go to fit, go back to the masking and we can turn that on and off now using this eye icon. So there's before, after and before and after. So without feeling like I'm rushing in any way whatsoever, it has literally taken minutes to go from importing the files, editing and ending up with a print. In fact, the longest part of the process was probably the printing. Anyway, exciting times with Lightroom as it's getting better and better and making it easier for us to edit our images. And certainly for me, in some circumstances, I'm finding that I spend less time in Photoshop, which is kind of unheard of. But that's all I've got for this video. If you've liked it, do give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.